Hi guys, Jay here from BornToBoost.com and welcome to this brand new Psytrance tutorial for Cubase. And if you're familiar with our tutorials, you know that we make a complete professional track from start to finish from absolutely nothing. And this is the track we'll be making together. So no more waffle from me, let's get on with it straight away. Let's get into the settings very briefly. So you should have Steinberg Hub when you first open Cubase. Just gonna click on more and empty and prompt for project location. Click create. I'm just gonna to navigate to the right folder. So I wanna to go to the root folder, Cubase projects and create new folder. Obviously call it what you want. And I'm just gonna select that folder. And we just need to name our project now as opposed to our folder. So save as. So that's the folder named, the project named. Let's quickly go and check your sound settings. So studio, studio setup, click on VSC audio system and just make sure in the drop down menu you have your sound card selected here. I would normally be using my Steinberg UR22, but just for recording this tutorial, I've got it on voice meter. I normally have boost set on audio priority and we're going to quickly go to project settings as well. Project settings, project setup. I personally normally work at 44.1, 24-bit, and I'm just going to change the project length to 7 minutes just so um, our project window isn't too long. Right, so what we need now is a really hard-hitting kick because that is what Psytrance is all about, with that and the bass as well. So I'm going to go to my file browser and choose a kick from our new Born to Produce Club Tools 1 sample pack. Don't worry, if you've purchased the course, you'll get all these samples that we use for free with the actual course. You don't have to go and buy the extra sample pack. So if you are doing this after purchasing the course, just go to your work files folder and go and get kick 13, which is what I'm going to do right now. And obviously there's a few kicks in here to choose from. But it's number 13 is the one I want because it's nice and punchy. Now you can either right click and do it as a sampler track or you can just drag in the audio to the um, actual arrangement window. But let's do it as a sampler track. I always prefer to do it this method uh, just so if we do change our mind later on we can just easily just change the kick. And all we've got to do now is we've got a sampler track already set up for us. Uh, we just need to trigger this by our MIDI. So I'm just going to hit Alt to get the draw tool up. Or you can come up to the top here and click draw. Let's just make this a bit easier. Let's make this a eight bar loop. So let's go from 25 to 33. We can always move this around later on, of course. So Alt down, one, two, three, four. And then we'll just double it over. Okay, looks like we've got a nine there anyway. <laughs> Can't count. Right, so let's trigger this kick. And uh, just go back to the sampler where it says that the sample that we brought in is on C3 and if you go anywhere else it will sound lower or higher in pitch so we really want to be triggering it on C3 so we come to C3 and we'll just again use the draw tool just draw in a kick on each beat and to make that simpler just make sure you've got one quarter notes on the quantize setting so that just helps you with the grid. It means that each of these lines is a quarter bar. And obviously in most dance music, it's four beats to a bar. Let's just zoom out with G. Okay, let's just highlight all of those and Control D to duplicate those across. We need to change our tempo. It's too slow at the moment. My side trance track we're gonna make here is gonna be 138. So I'm just gonna double click that, or you can click and drag your mouse upwards. I'm just going to type in 138, press return. Okay, you can also zoom in just by clicking and dragging down in the timeline. We'll just start with a four bar loop, that's fine. If you want to, you can come into the sampler and mess around with the sample length. So if you want this kick to be a bit shorter, you can. You've got a fade in there as well. But I want to keep it as it is because it sounds about right. Uh, sometimes kicks have got a big sort of subby tail on them and then you might not want that, so you can just just literally just take off the tail or of course you can change the start position as well you've also got a full envelope here which you can mess around with but we won't mess around with that at the moment we might do that later on so this kick is great but we can make it even fatter let's have a little look at the eq 
And I'm just going to sweep around see if I can find some nice frequencies to boost and some not so nice frequencies to reduce. Bit of a knock there which we'll take out. And see if we can beef up the lower end. Obviously not too much but just maybe just bring out that tiny bit of sub just to give it a bit more oomph. So that sounds about nice there. Notice that I'm not going overboard here and it's got quite a nice sort of high end to it but let's just decide whether we want that or not. Let's just put a um, high shelf on. It's already on high shelf so we can you can either make this higher or lower. Just bring it out the top end. Okay, let's just do a quick before and after with all the EQ we've just applied. And later on we can adjust this EQ if we want. Once we've got a lot more elements going on in the track, we can decide these kinds of things, whether we want high end or not. So before EQ, Yep, I quite like it. Just bypass number two and number three by using these on and off buttons here. And generally, you don't really want to be boosting any more than three or four dB, really, as a general rule, but it depends what you're doing, of course. So that number two at 59 hertz just gives it a nice bottom end punch. Let's see what three is doing. Before. Yeah, I like that a lot because that's taking out the slight knock effect, which, um, which I don't like. Okay, that's it really for this very, very quick lesson one. I'm just gonna take out the um, eighth note here so we've got room for a big snare to come in. So here, we'll take out the eighth one, and that leaves a gap for the hard hitting snare, which we'll do in lesson three, I think. So that's it guys, that's a very quick introduction to setting up Cubase, getting a side trance kick in, and EQing it for maximum punch. In the next session, we're gonna start making a really hard hitting, punchy side trance bass line, so stay tuned for that. If you found this lesson useful, please like, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notifications to get more and more of these start to finish tutorials. All the best guys, see you later.